Hi, it's time for another math easy solution terms. Today we're going to discuss further into applications of integrals and look further into probability and now go over example two of the example series and solve this one which states uh, basically phenomena such as waiting times or equipment failure times are commonly modeled by exponentially decreasing probability density functions and uh, the question here states find the exact form of such a function yeah now the the reason that they these are modeled by exponentially decreasing probability density functions is because initially when you whenever you call uh, let's say let's say in our case let's just assume that we're looking at the random variable as being the time you wait on hold before an agent of a company you're calling answers your call so usually if you just think about it when you're calling some someone for a customer service or whatnot they usually uh, pick up right away which means uh, again that that's why we would use this exponential decreasing probability function because if uh, as, if you were to call many times the odds that you'll have a shorter time is higher than you know waiting for an hour or, or like let's say a day just to be extreme you're not gonna wait that long so yeah, so for this uh, this example, let's look at this random variable as, again, the time you wait whenever you call a company for a customer service or whatnot, they put you on hold or, or, they, or you could just answer it right away. So basically the time you wait. So instead of x, let's, uh, as a random variable, let's use t to represent times because it's easier to deal with time than t and write this in minutes. So if f is the probability density function, and you call a time uh, t equals zero, then the, then the probability that an agent answers within the first two minutes, again, recall probability density function in my earlier video on probability and the introduction as you, uh, basically the probability that it's uh, agent answers within the first two minutes, you would write it at as this. t is greater than or equal to zero, but less than or equal to two and this would equal to the integral of this probability density function or the area um, the area below the curve so this is up to 2 of this probability density function f of t dt and there's another and also for example during the fifth minute this just means that the probability that you get uh, that you have to wait until the fifth minute is going to be well between 4 and 5 because the there's no zeroth minute the first minute is from 0 to 1 second is from one to two, et cetera, all the way to four to five is the fifth minute. Once you pass this fifth minute, it becomes the sixth minute. And that's this integral again underneath the probability density function uh, curve, so from four to five of f of t dt. So now let's look first when uh, t is less than zero, well, that probability density function has to equal to zero. That's because um, basically the agent can't answer the call before you even call so you can't yeah you can't be talking to them before they call you so you can't have a negative time so when when we're deriving this function we'll just say that um, basically whenever t is less than zero the probability density function is zero so the area below it or the probability of anything happening below uh, I mean during that range is zero so that just takes care of that and now for t is greater than zero, we are told to use an exponentially decreasing function. So again, we're assuming to use an exponentially decreasing function. That's saying just find the exact form of this function. So we'll write basically for t is greater than zero, we'll let uh, the probability density function equal to a exponentially decreasing function. So we'll call it uh, a, so f of t equals a times the e to the power of again this is the this is what it means by exponential and it's decreasing so we have to have a negative um, power like that and again where we'll call this a and c are the constants a c are positive constants yeah and these are positive well the c has to be positive because we already put the negative here and then this power needs to be a negative because we are decreasing. So, yeah, so, yeah, when you have a negative power, that, that is a decreasing value. But if you had a positive, this, this just gets higher and higher, which isn't good. And also, A is, is positive because we need to ensure that this function is positive. Yeah, because basically, um, yeah, because 
like I showed in my earlier video, that w the one of the conditions for probability density function it has to be greater than or equal to zero. Again, this is for all PDFs or probability density functions right here. Yeah, thus putting these two together, what we have is a function f of t is equal to, and it's a two-part function equals to zero for if t is less than zero. I'll write this down, if t is less than zero. I'll write this neater. And then it also equals to the exponential function e to the power of negative ct if t is greater than zero. Yeah, I mean greater than or equal to zero. I'll add that here. Yeah, I'll just update that. So this is t is greater than or equal to zero. Like that. Yeah, because this function, again, it fits when, or, when t is zero. That just means that the uh, agent picks up your phone right away. Yeah, so this is the form with these two constants, but we can actually determine uh, the constant a. Yeah, this constant can be determined by using the fact that the total area, again, the other condition on a, on a probability density function, the total area under the PDF must equal to 1 because the area represents a probability. So the probability that any, anything happens or any time can happen it has to be equal to 100% or 1. So f of t is going to equal to, actually not f of t, I mean, I mean we're going to have to write 1 is equal to the area underneath the probability density function and the area for all values negative infinity to infinity of f t dt and this equals two well we're going to break this up into two parts so the first part is from negative infinity to zero of f of t dt then we have to add from zero to positive infinity of f of t dt so this first one right here, this is equal to zero. So integral of zero, that just goes to zero. So we're just dealing with, well, this, this part right here. So we have one is equal to the integral from zero to infinity of f of t dt, which equals two integral from zero to infinity of a e to negative c t dt. And now, but this is an infinite uh, limit right here, or I mean, infinite interval right here, so we can't solve this directly like that. Instead, we have to use a limit, like I showed in my earlier videos on infinite, um, I mean, on integrating uh, integrals where intervals infinity. You can see that in the video link below. So what we'll write here is equals to the limit as, let's put random number x approaches to infinity. And now this is from zero to x. Of, yeah, so, in, so now we could evaluate this integral because we're not dealing with an infinite number, we're dealing with x, and then we take the limit dt. So we could solve this, this equals to limit, x approaches infinity, and when we evaluate this integral, this is a constant, I'll just take the a out. We're gonna have e negative c t, the integral of uh, exponential function is, is itself, but then with the chain rule, yeah. you have to put this negative c. So when you take the integral, I mean take the derivative, it's itself, and then multiply by this negative c again. That cancels. So we have now this is from zero to x, and this negative c is also constant. I'll take that out. So it goes limit x approaches a, and x approaches infinity of this all like this actually a negative c I'll just put it around like that actually okay so what we have is and evaluate this this is e to the negative c and we plug in the x cx minus then we plug in the zero we took the negative c out again because it's constant we could take it out of this integral so now we put the zero e to the negative well this is e to the zero because uh, negative c times z zero is a zero, so e to the zero, we all know that just approaches one, any number, power of zero approaches one. So now what we have, and again, you can learn more about this power to zero, it's pretty interesting in my earlier videos. I'll put that in a video link below in the description of this video as well. So what we end up having is, this is a constant, I'll just take that out, <clears throat> a over negative c, and then limit, 
as x approaches infinity of what we have now is e to the negative x. Well, what I'll do is I'll flip this to make it easier. e to the cx minus 1. And now we have two limits right here. So when you plug in, in infinity here, what happens is this bottom part, what we get is a 1 over infinity, which approaches, well, 1 divided by a really, really large number approaches 0. And this negative 1 doesn't matter what, there's no x variable, so that's just negative 1. So this approach is 0. So what we end up having is a over negative c, then 0 minus 1, which just equals to, well, um, a over negative c times negative 1. And then this negatives cancel, this equals to a over c. So what this means is 1 is equal to a over c. In other words, rearranges a is equal to, just multiply this out, a equals to c. So the constants are the exact same. Yeah, so that's what we have is thus every exponential probability density function has to have the form of that looks like this when we model it using the exponential decreasing function. So it equals to 0 for if um, this is if t is less than 0 and s equals to c now because a is equal to c. c Neg uh, negative ct if t is greater than or equal to zero. And then when you graph this out, well, let's just see what happens uh, here. So when you graph it out, it's going to look something like this. If this is t and this is y, so at t equals to zero, what we end up having is, is uh, f of zero is equal to c e zero, this is a zero, this goes to one, and this equals to c. So the highest value is the initial one. So this is value c, and it's exponential, so it de keeps decreasing, and as you go to infinity, it goes closer and closer to zero. Let's draw it closer and closer. Yeah, and when you graph it, I'll just graph it a bit better. So it goes closer and closer to zero. This is equal to y f of t. Yeah, and this is a probability density function that models yeah, call, call wait times, equipment failure times, etc. Yeah, and an example of a equipment failure time is if you're looking at, let's say, some sort of industrial motor, and you'll see that uh, it's likelihood that it will uh, fail earlier, and then as you uh, extend further and further, you'll see that you'll have less probability that it will uh, fail uh, later, meaning it will last that long. You're not going to have a motor going for 100 years. You're, you're going to have more fail initially as opposed to uh, lasting super long. Anyways, that's all for today. Hopefully you'll learn from this uh, pretty interesting example on showing a yeah, probably density function that's different from what I went over in my earlier videos, which was uh, the bell curve, which is the more common one used in a lot of stuff like school, grades, uh, heights of people, etc. Anyways, all for today. Hopefully you'll learn. Like always, you can download these exact notes in the link below. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for another math easy solution.